Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to go over section 3.2 and 3.3 today. So first, I would like to share my screen and turn on the PowerPoint. So the whole chapter three, you will learn about numerical summaries. So you have learned numerical data and categorical data, right? So now, so chapter three, we're focusing uh, mostly on, on numerical data. And for numerical data, you have two subcategories. So the first one is, uh, we're talking about symmetric. Uh, distribution and the second would be uh, um, skew distribution. Okay, so right here they the general talking about the center and variation depend on your data set. If your data set um, is symmetric for the center, you will compute the average. Uh, if your data set is skew, then you your center will be median. So you have to find median. Uh, which is a typical value of the whole data set. And the variations, um, you will uh, check by um, looking at um, the, the whole set, right? So you will um, compute, we call the standard, uh, standard deviations, S, uh, and sometimes you just like estimating by comparing in general. Um, now, I would like to um, go over this uh, part talking about mainly about empirical rules and the Z score. So empirical rules is the rules create for symmetric distribution, not for skew. Okay, only for apply for for symmetric. So what is symmetric distribution? Then you will see it. I think I talk about this. Uh, the previous chapters uh, about the mouth, right? One mouth shape, right? Like that, or like the bell shape. So the bell shape is we call symmetric distribution. And the Z score, the Z score helping you to, um, it's have a lot of function, but for this one, you will um, compare or choosing um, the conclusion better based on the z-score and, and in the future you will learn about z-score apply for um, you can find the probability or the area under the curve and right here again um, determine if a data value is unusual um, yeah, for any data is unusual. You notice that data right away uh, because it's total, totally different from the rest of the data set, right? So like this picture, you notice the person in the middle very tall compared to the rest of the people. So this, this person is unusual compared to the, the rest of the set, right? So total seven people, but only him is tallest. Uh, this is one of the example of um, some data is unusual that you can see. Uh, later more example for you to understand uh, why we call unusual and what is the name of it. You will see it. So now I would like to jump to empirical rules. So again, empirical rules only apply for symmetric distribution only. Okay. And right here is the definitions. The empirical rules is a rough guideline for a pro approximate percentage of the data within one, two, and three standards deviations of the mean. Usually in a unimodal, unimodal, which is the bell shape, okay? right side of that shape have to be roughly symmetric, roughly like equal, the same. And we call that asymmetric distributions. And the guideline for you to compute or to look at um, the data so that you can find the percentage of the data in that um, symmetric distribution. 
So the guideline will be the following. Percent of the data within. So the empty space right here, you can look at the example, the actual example to tell, is it one standard deviation of the mean or two standard deviation of the mean or three? So they break down as following. 68% of the data usually lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So you can imagine that the bell shape is look like this. The mean all the time will be in the middle of that shape, right? So one standard deviation away from the mean will be, they count from the mean, one standard below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. We call that is one standard deviation of the mean. So for empirical rule only apply for symmetric, it means the data with, within one standard deviation of the mean, the total will be 68% of the data, all right? And when they extend more, which is with, that we call within two standard deviation of the mean, which is you can imagine from one right here, right? One above and one below the mean. Now it's become two above the mean and two below the mean. So the total of the data between two standard deviation of the mean, the total will be 95% of the data, right? And the rest, which is three standard deviation of the mean, will make you have the total of 99.7%. They don't list it here, but uh, from you can research that empirical rules, then you will see the, 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 the graph. So in general, almost, almost all of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So the other 3% will be divide, you know, 1.5% for each side, like, like very, like, like a tail of the graph, like the, the left tail and the right tail of the graph, total add up 3%. Um, so anyway, uh, let me see if I can explain a bit better throughout this example for you. So this is the um, application about empirical rule for you. The example talking about the data on a small level. In a sample of CDs was collected and the distribution was found to be roughly symmetric and unimodal. So it looked like the first, the picture, the distribution, the data is a bell shape, symmetric. The mean particular, particular level for the sample was about 10.7 micrograms per cubic liters. So they provide us the mean will be with just the numbers stay in the middle of the graph is 10.7, right? And the standard deviations will be about 2.6 per cubic liter. This 2.6 stand, stand for one standard deviation away from the mean doesn't matter is below or above, but one standard deviation above the mean will be, you wanna take 10.7 at with 2.6. You will have the value for the value right at uh, above the mean one standard deviations. Okay, so I believe the graph will be below so that you can understand better what I'm talking about or I can grab right away for you so that you can imagine what the picture look like right now. Okay, so let me stop the video and share it better. So let me draw the bell shape. I'm pretending the bell shape look like this. All right, your data. So I will draw a line to present my data. I know it's not perfect, uh, but you understand what I'm talking about, right? 
The middle of the graph here, I cut it into half. So we call this would be the mean. The mean here is 10.7. Let me write inside here so that um, below I can um, draw the, the next la level. This is 10.7. That's your mean. And they provide us the standard deviation is 2.6. So it means each value away from the mean apart like about 2.6 microgram per cubic liter. So if the next value that I will find, what I do, I will take 10.7, I add with 2.6. So one standard deviation will be Let's uh, you compute for me. 10.7 plus 2.6 give us 13.3, right? 13.3 will be the value above the mean. So 13.3 will be, so this 13.3 is the value we call one standard deviation away from the mean right here. And how about below the mean? So if below the mean, you have to take 10.7, you minus 2.6, which just give you, what is it? 8 point, no, I'm sorry, 7.9, right? So 10 minus this, I'm sorry, 10.7 minus this will be 8.1. You double check for me, please and so on. So this, your data set here, if we apply in protocol rule, let me see if I can change different color. So let me make this all the way here. Let me draw up, I draw up here. So your data from here is present for 68% with just one standard deviation away from the mean. And remember, symmetric distribution doesn't have to be that tall, okay? It can be flat, it can be very tall, it can be wider as long as they are unimodal. So here is just like the example. The actual one have to have a lot of data so that you can see the accurate shape, but here I'm just demonstrate for you to look at. And if they're asking about, how about two standard deviation away from the mean, you will go ahead to take the mean at two times the standard deviation. You will have the next value, okay, and so on. All right, you, you understand what I'm talking about? Above and below, you keep doing the same math and you got it. All right, so let me move on to the next one. Let me see the next one, what is it? So here is also the good picture. Oh, sorry, try to erase this. Okay. So you look at this uh, data. Right here, they're using, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't using the bell shape like me, but um, it's okay. So here is for you to um, see more data than I do, right? So the middle, for example, from the from here to here will be the whole set of your data. And then you they're asking for 60%. You will understand right away. Um, you have to mark your mean, the average with 10.7 right here. We they notate as X bar. X bar represents for the, the mean or the average of the whole set. And each value like 10.7 and 13.3 and 15.9, each of this data, they are one standard deviation away from each other. If I, for 15.9, this value is two standard deviation from the mean. So you see that the, that they said plus two SD, plus two SD is mean plus, which is the positive sign, which is greater, right? Greater than the mean. 
you add two and then you have to time with the standard deviation, which is 2.6 right here. I think 2.67, right? Let me go back. Um, 2.6. You take uh, 10.7, you add with 2 times 2.6. You will have the value 15.9, okay? And right here, similar to here, in order to get 18.5, this is 18.5 is three standard deviation away from the mean. In order to find that 18.5, you take um, the X bar, which is 10.7, you plus. With three, you take the three, you time with 2.6. You you're using um, the math, the correct math, which is order of operations from algebra. You compute to get 18.5. Similarly with uh, the, the value below the mean. So below the mean, they have the minus, the minus, the minus, you see? And uh, you will have the value exactly like this. All right, class. So any questions, you can email me. If you have any question, please email me. So right here, is explain a bit more about empirical rules. Empirical rules, you are focusing on one standard deviation away from the mean, which is you are talking about 68% of your data, which is within, right? You, you see the picture, you will remember the picture. All the data, one standard deviation away from the mean will be from 8.1 to 13.3. And those data within this range will be total about 68% of the whole data set. And 95% of the CDs will have small level between 5.5 and 15.9. So this is talking about the to total of the data uh, within two standard deviations away from the mean. What does it mean? It means it will including the range A part one and 13.3, okay? And three standard deviation away from the mean, which is the range from 2.9 to all the way to 18.5. And this will be about 99.7%. And this three standard deviation away from the mean will be including two standard deviation and one standard deviation away from the mean, all right? And again, empirical rule only apply for uni model or symmetric distribution. Right here is another example with another questions um, relate to temperatures. The mean daily high temperature in San Francisco is 65 degrees Fahrenheit with a standard deviation of 8 degrees Fahrenheit. They provide us this in general. And again, we assume this will be unimodal so that we can apply empirical rules. So on the question, if there will be a question like this, so please consider the example or um, the question they are talking about unimodal or symmetric distribution. So now you notice uh, the mean is 65 and the standard deviation is eight. If I'm talking about Find the temperature range, ranges from 68%, which is which mean one standard deviation away from the mean. 95%, which mean two standard deviation away from the mean. And 99.7% of the data, which mean three standard deviation away from the mean. So in order to find this, again, you have to do the math like I show you. So what is it? You will take the mean, you add with one, time SD, which is time eight, will give you the, ne the, the next value, one above the mean. You do the same way for below the mean. One standard deviation below the mean, you will take 65 minus one time eight, will give you a value. You have to use calculator basic, any calculator, I don't mind, to compute that. Similarly, with 95% and 99.7%, you do, do the same formula, but change one to two, 
and three, you know, um, corresponding with 95% and 99.7%. I give you the hint ahead of time, but later in detail, I will show you um, in the PowerPoint. Now, question two, using empirical rules to decide whether it is unusual to have a day when the maximum temperature is colder than 99, than 49 degree Fahrenheit in San Francisco. So you will see it by computing. Mostly all the time they are looking at the 95% um, or two standard deviation away from the mean, which is the standard. Um, so if like out of the range with 95%, you will see the, the unusual value. So let me double check the next slide. The next slide for question number one, you see that this is the formula. So eight degree here stand for one standard deviation away from the mean. This is two, this is three. So you compute, you got a value. On your test, you do the same way. You have to show me the conclusion, not just the algebra. Number two. So right here, since 95% of the daily high temperature are between uh, this and this value, a 49 to 81. So um, according to empirical rule, about 5% of the temperature are outside of the range, right? So, so this will be the conclusion for that question is mean, um, because it's symmetric, so 2.5% will be from each side, right? So one is colder and one represent for warmer. So having a temperature colder than that is a, is fairly unusual. So having colder is um is unusual. Now talking about Z score. So Z score measure how many standard deviations or unobserved data value is from the mean. So what what does actually mean? So the Z score can be negative or positive. Okay, the maximum of the Z score that you can find will be um, like um, actually. Um, Right now, I, I cannot say the, the maximum. Uh, you will learn it in chapter six because uh, the maximum or minimum z-score is really a bit about probability. So I don't want to mention it right now, uh, but right here focusing on the z-score, let's go back to that uh, basics. Uh, the z-score, um, they talking about, this will be a number, right? It can be negative or positive, but that negative or positive is present for the number of the standard deviations, right? For example, if my Z score is 1.5, it means the observed data value, which is the given value, the observed data value or given value, is 1.5 standard deviation above the mean, okay? So each of the observed data will be around 1.5, 1.5, roughly the average. So it looks like the average of each observed data away from the mean is about, away from each other, okay? Like 1.5, 1.5, add up. And the z-score is negative 1.5, it means the, the observed data is 1.5 too. Of course, it's 1.5, but they're talking about below the mean. 1.5 is above the mean, and negative 1.5, they're talking about 1.5 standard deviation below the mean. It just z score is just the number of the standard deviations, above or below the mean, from the observed data. So look at this one. Here is, you look at this, we call, this graph we call dot plot. Dot plot is mean you learn in chapter two, right? So they make a dot. So each dot represents for individual data. So look at right here. They go a bit up, go up. So let's say here kind of roughly symmetric. 
and the standard deviation they compute by technology they have on the left side of the mean will be negative one and the right side of the mean will be positive one sd and so on right so it looks like you see the the value 61 64 67 70 73 76 and 79 they are the raw raw score value which is the actual value so the number below that will be let me see negative three negative two negative one zero one two three this we call the z value okay so for the mean the z value the z score will be become zero and the value 67 right here will be one standard deviation away from the mean and the value 73 here will be one standard deviation above the mean okay negative will be below and positive will be above and so on you notice each of this data they are apart like one standard deviation or in other words the the standard deviation between this st is what three units apart right okay so this dot plot show the height of the sample of the man and how many men would have z score and you notice uh, all each of the men right here the z score would be below it so 64 would be have z score so that have z score right 67 a z score right there and many dot in between they have different z score okay they have like 0 0.1 0 0.2 uh, 0 0.3 stuff like that um it's depend so you can estimate by by like i do you can like estimate like here one two three four five um so you can divide evenly and maybe this line right here will be like roughly about 0 0.2 i'm estimating it so anyway, I'm not gonna let you compute really in detail like that. Uh, but right now you can answer for me this following question. Tell me how many men would have Z scores greater than two? So you check by looking at the graph. So Z score is two where it's right here, which is the man is like about 76. This may be 76 inches. So right here, they asking for greater then two is mean they not include two so you check greater than two is only have two there's two dots right there right they don't care is if it's 79 then it will be three um the standard division will be three but we don't you know we don't care about that we only care about that all the data is greater than two so which is right here so you can say it's roughly like uh 77 I'm, th I'm, I'm sorry, 70A or 70A and something for that value. So the answer is that this two. And for the next question, less than negative two. Less than negative two. Negative, negative, two, negative two is right here. Less than is one, two dot, two, two. The same. So we have two mans have Z score greater than two, and two mans have Z score less than negative two. Here is another example. A Z score allow us to compute, compare, I'm sorry, to compare the observations in different distributions. So look like we are having this for this example, we are having two distributions separately. Okay. So the first distribution they're talking about, uh, row A. Suppose row A has the mean speed of 60 mph with the standard deviation of 5 mph which is my per hour and row b has a mean speed of 60 mph with a standard deviation of 10 mph so now right you we can separate two distribution one distribu distribution represent for row a and the second dis um, distribution represent for row b and the question is, is a driver going 70 mph on row A traveling relatively faster or slower than a driver going 70 mph on row B? So in order to do this, you have to first compute Z value. You need to understand what Z value actually means and how do I compute that? 
So in order to compute that, I'm having the, the following formula for you. The formula will uh, distribute underneath of the next slide, but I would like um, to, to give you right now so that you can have the set, uh, what is it, um, how do you can compute that? Annotate. So okay, let me use the blue color to compute the Z value. And the Z value, so right now you've got two distribution. You can write distribution uh, uh, for row A is, uh, I say Z1, okay? So will be the raw score X, which is whatever, the value of the car driving, the speed of, of the car, we are talking about the speed of the car right now. So I can write the raw score X, which is the unknown value. Later you will plug in the, val the X value is which is 70 right here. You take away the mean, which is X bar. X bar is the mean, okay? You divide it by standard deviations. Yes. And here you have to using S1, which is uh, S for row A only. Okay, so you help me to compute that. You can pause um, and then try to compute to see the value. And then you do the same thing for row B. So when we did computing, you were done. Then you will have the following data. Let me erase so that you don't have to, um, okay, you can see this clearer. So all of us know that the for row A, the mean is 60 and um, the standard deviation is fine. And row B is like 60. Uh, and but the standard deviation is 10. So they both, if they say, uh, they both driving, if they both driving at 70, so you using the formula that I give you, then you compute that to see the result at the following. So the both driver are traveling at 70 MPH. The driver on row A is traveling relatively faster. So row A is faster and why is it faster? So when you compute, you will say what I'm talking about. So when you compute for Z1, you got what value? You got two. And when you compute for Z2, you got the value is one, right? So it's two standard deviation above the mean compared to one standard deviation above the mean. You, you see what I'm talking about, right? Of course, two standard deviation above the mean, which is, would mean faster than the average, right? It's drive faster than rho. Um, I'm sorry. I said the opposite. So let me repeat one more time. Over here, when, when you compute, because I, I don't compute right now, so I cannot visualize the value. So in, in short, you are having um, 70 minus 60, you got what? You got 10 divided by five is two. Ah, I'm set correctly. I'm sorry, I, I did set correctly. Uh, for row B, 70, you minus 60 is 10. 10, you divide by 10, give you one. Oh, that's good, correct. So I just said correctly, um, excuse me. So right here, the conclusion is the driver on row A is traveling relatively faster than um, the speed. Uh, when it's drive 70 uh, MPH, is two standard deviation above the mean on row A, right? And only one standard deviation above, one standard deviation above on row B. So one, two standard deviation, of course, is faster than one standard deviations. All right, so I hope you understand kind of what does it mean Z-score and how Z-score help you to compare. Um, the more Z-score value, the greater it is, will be the faster it is, the better it is. And here is the formula that I'm using to show you. So this is the one. And here, another example for you to, to help you to understand Z score. So here is it. So Maria scored 80 out of 100 on her first stat, stat exam. Um, and she got 85 out of 100 on her second stat exams. Right? It's not like 85, she, she got better grade than in the stat class. But however, so what is the question? On the first exam, the mean of the whole class is like 70. 
and the standard deviation of the class is 10, which mean like uh, some of them getting 80, 90, 100, um, the standard deviation is 10, right? So you are taking 70 minus 10 for each time to roughly estimating the um, other students going to class. And on the second exams, the mean was 80, well, which is high. It's higher than in the stat class. And the stand, but the standard deviation was like only five. So they question, uh, on which exam did Mary perform better? Uh, if, if you compare to two classes that she take um, for stat and for uh, her, or well, what is it, on her, on her second stat exam, also the both stat exam, but the first and the second, um, compared to the average of the whole class, uh, which one she will do better. So in order to do this, you have to again apply the formula that I give you, which is Z equal to X minus X bar divided by S. So you have to, you should write this formula somewhere on your papers too, uh, so that you can look back um, to compute the Z value. So if the Z value of the Z value is equal, then she did she perform the same. But if the the Z score that she got one is higher than another, it means she did better when her Z score is better compared to the other one. Okay. So here is the, the formula. They apply the formula right away. They got the first exam is one, Z is one, the second is Z is one. Conclusion, she did the same thing. But I'm saying if here is number two, here's number one, it's me the first exam, she did better. All right. So I'm finished three point two. And right now, if you have questions, please email me. Um, and right now, I would like to jump to section uh, three part three. Okay, we have time, so I would like to jump to three part three. Let me see, minimize this, minimize, minimize it. Let me see, no point. 3.3, three. okay, start 3.3. Three three. So for section 3.3, for section three, again, this is the whole chapter three. We did talk about this already. But for section 3.3 three, three itself, um, we're talking about skew distribution. Our skew distribution, again, we are talking about numerical data, which is related to number, number or what we can compute um, by hands or by technologies. So right here, um, you will learn how to measure the center, which, which is we call the midpoint. If we're talking about skew distribution, usually we're talking about median. So median will be the present for the typical value of the whole set or the middle point of the whole set. Another definition is the central value of the whole data set. And you will learn about measure of the um, horizontal spread, which is we you talking, talking about variability. So in for symmetric, which is which is 3.2, 3.1, um, we're talking about symmetric distribution. You compute the the spread by compute standard deviations, okay? And what is the formula? You have to check back 3.1 to see the formula. And for this skew distribution, you are talking about to compute the spread, you using the formula IQR. IQR is the notation for interquartile range. And in order to compute this, you have to compute Q3 you minus Q1. What is Q3 and Q1? You will learn now. Okay, so the median. So look at the set. For, so first, you look at this distribution. It's a tall right here and a bit, it's a, it's a bit tall right here, medium. And I go all the way down and it's less and less and less and far, all the way over here. So this we call skewed right, because this is less data on the right side, so skewed right. In order to 
it, for the skill data, it's very hard for you to can um, if somebody asking you to find the average. Um, if you, you compute the average, it's not really accurate uh, when you ask computing median. So for the average, you better using for symmetric distribution. But for this skew distribution, the better way is to find median. But to find median, you have to know how to um, real render data. And if you don't want to compute by hand, you can practice on stat crunch. And again, for stat crunch, I would like to record different video uh, only about stat crunch for you to look at from the whole, from all chapters. So that uh, you don't get like, you don't have to turn on many videos. For this one, let me teach you. Maybe hopefully in this uh, PowerPoint slide, they show you uh, compute by technology, but I, I don't believe so. Uh, usually, usually for compute median, they use, we usually compute by hands only. But I have to, to see. So median is the, the middle number when the data has been sharded from smallest to largest. Um, okay. So right here, they uh, technology right here using StatCrunch. Uh, so they did use technology. Uh, I apologize for this. Uh, they did use technology StatCrunch. And again, I will show you later how to compute this. Um, yes, I remember it now. Yeah, it's easy. It's, uh, uh, we can compute on start crunch with just one click. Uh, right here, you notice the red line represent from median, which is the central value of the whole set here. Okay, let me see. So this data is talking about they can average, they can compute an average. So most people will come through far like about around like 25,000 um, 25, per year. That's what it means. And here they give us two distributions. So one is right here. The mean is different. The mean, the mean for the first one is 42.1. The mean for the second one um, is 25.2. Uh, some people say like, okay, mean, mean. Uh, yes, it's kind of, it's very similar. It's, I think it's similar, but it's just different name for apply for different distribution for the mean. Uh, um, but however, they want you to see that the mean, what the differences between mean and median. Um, so they both look at exactly, they are exactly distribution. But if you compute the mean, um, like you apply for symmetric distribution, you got the mean is like 42.1, 42, 42.1 is right here. And they don't believe this too, because this skew, because this skew, then they don't believe that a lot of people, they make like about 42,000 per year. They don't believe that because more data is from the first and the second column rather than the third one, right? So they don't believe that. So that's why they don't believe in compute the mean for a skew distribution. But if they find, figure it out by using the median, they use median method, they will see more accurate data that for the skew distribution like this. So that's why they say median is better fit for skew data. So which is better measure of the typical income of a New York City resident, the mean or median? You know the answer right away would be the median. The median is the middle number. So, so here is how you compute median by hand, all right? Compute by com computer or technology. Again, I will show you later. Um, I remember when we run box plot, um, when you run box plot later, I will show you how to run box plot too. And you know, there's a button for you to click to find median and mean right away. Uh, right here, to find median by hands, you rearrange all the numbers in order from low to high. And then you find a middle number. You find a middle number, it depends on, on its order even. So if two numbers are in the middle, 
you check the average. If if only one number in the middle of the set, you take you point that one to be median. But if it's two number in the middle, you have to take the average. And think of median as the middle point, a good measure uh, of a typical value for skew distribution. So this is like, like a conclusion that you see. Here's the example. Suppose a sample of prices for one gallon of regular gas at 10 different gas stations in the neighborhood in Austin, Texas is taking on one for a day in 2013. We find and interpret the median. We did do this for part of the mean. So now they want you to practice to compute this by finding median. And um, remember, for symmetric distribution, mean can be called median because for symmetric distribution, mean and median really close to each other, right? They, they have almost exact value, almost. So if the distribution is symmetric, you can find the mean or median is still both accurate. However, if your distribution is skewed, you must find median. You cannot find a mean. So please remember that. For this example about gas station, we have known this is symmetric. So you can find a mean easily. You can find a mean. It's still accurate. Okay, mean or median is still accurate. So this median, I believe, is roughly exactly like the mean. But let's practice. Reorder all the data. Rearrange all the data from low to high and find the middle two number. You see 2.99, 2.99. You divide it by two, you got 2.99. So 2.99 will be the median of the set. So for the mean for our previous example, we compute 3.02. Roughly the same, right? Roughly. So median price of one gallon of gas at this gas station in Austin, Texas was 2.99 on this particular day in 2013. So here you, you, you can understand that uh, for any symmetric distribution, the mean or median is not really different. If you are having TI-84 calculator, here is a step for you to practice. You are welcome to. Since you all bought the e-tax online from Pearson, uh, you don't have to use CI-84. Um, you just need to focus on StatQuant. StatQuant is very simple. It works like a calculator, and but it's, it's work more jobs. Um, so I hope that you can spend time you know, playing around with it. Uh, if I'm not going over that section yet, please just you know practice and play around with it to learn more. You will learn a lot of interesting things, more than me. Measuring the spread. So you, we are talking about the variability now uh, for the skew data. So we did talk about IQR, right? So right here, IQR is the interquartile range. This IQR talking about 50% of the whole data set. Um, the middle 50, I'm sorry, the middle 50 of the whole data set, we call IQR. So this IQR, you will take Q3, you minus Q1. Q1 is, what is it? Q1 actually is the 25th percentile, okay? Um, and Q3 is the 75, uh, 75th percentile. Uh, we learn about percentile. What does it mean? So let me uh, recall back percentile. Percentile, you are talking about, um, for example, Q1 is a value. As 25th percentile is mean, this value, about 20, um, 25% of, the, 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 of the data. 25% of the data is below this percentile, this value. And the rest of it will be, uh, you take 100, you minus this percentile, you got uh, 75. 
So 75% of the whole data will be above this value percentile. How about Q3? Q3 is 75th percentile. What does it mean? It means the value at Q3 right here, about 75% of the whole data is below this value at Q3. How, how about 25% left? 25% left is above this value, okay? Above that, that uh, percentile position. Uh, the range, uh, to find the range IQR, you have to first uh, find Q3 and then Q, Q1, and then you take the differences. So right here is look like they compute by hands. Uh, before we get IQR, we need to talk about the range and quartiles. The range is the difference between the largest and the smallest value. Remember, the range is not as same as IQR. So IQR can call the range, but the range here is uh, they talking about the whole data set, like every single observed number in the set. You will take the largest value in the set, you minus the smallest value to get the range. But IQR, you have to find Q3 minus Q1. Please note it down. Uh, so here's the example. A group of eight children have the following heights. If they're asking for the range of the, the height of the children, they take the largest minus the smallest, they got 23 inches. Let's talk about quartiles. Quartiles divide the distributions into fourth, as you notice below. One, two, three, four box. It doesn't have to be equal all at the same time. It might be non-data from, from some value to some value. So, so the first box look like, mm, you can count many boxes in here. Look at this box is big, right? However, they don't count like the, the, the width of that. They count the total, the total uh, values in here. But if, if, what I mean is you can count the dots in here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 20. So 20 dots in the first box, but let's say the second box, they have how many dots? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 14, and then here right here, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. 14 plus 8 is 22. It's kind of more data compared to the first one. Right, but it's um, but then for the third box, it looked like uh, it's like they split it half and half. They got let's say how many uh, two, five, uh, eight, fourteen, uh, okay, fourteen, and then they have more over here, uh, which is um, 19, 20, 20, 22. I didn't count this dot twice. So it looked like 22 here. Um, in short, in short, what does it mean? So the, the, the number of the data in each box here is like, they divide evenly, like 25%, 25% from, from this first box, we, we call the column, the blue column right here. The blue column right here, we call 25th percentile. But this column, the red column right here, we call 50 percentile or Q2. Some people call the median, right? Usually they call median. Um, don't call it mean because uh, a median you can apply for symmetric and uh, skew distribution is, is still okay, the same. Uh, so they call the red here will be uh, Q2 or median. And this uh, line right here we call seven, 75th percentile, which is Q3 right here. Okay, the rest of the data will be um, 
the low value will be one of the dots in here, the first uh, uh, box, and the highest value will be might be on the last box. Uh, okay, from the observed data. So, how to compute IQR? Like I said, IQR, what does it mean? It's the range of the middle 50% of the data. See, we're just from here all the way here. That's it. That's IQR. So, because IQR is from like a box, um, so that you can notice, you can focus in on most of the data in that box to determine the mean or, or more data or typical value of the variation the, of the, the spread of the data. You can look at the IQR to tell. So example, the dot plot shows the distribution of the weights for a class of the introduction, introductory so the statistics students, the vertical line slide, the distribution into four parts. So each part has about 25% of the ob observation data. Okay. To compute um, by using, um, you can use TID4. Usually um, uh, for the, usually I don't, it's up to you, but my personal, I don't um, use TID4 for the online class. Uh, however, you are welcome to do it. You are fine with it. I'm fine with that. Uh, but because you already bought StatCrunch, just apply StatCrunch. And for StatCrunch, they have the slide below for you to, to tap in how to find it easier. Inter-quartile range uh, for this one. Um, previous example, just the same thing to find that by using calculator. So here is an inter-quartile range by using calculator. So I so please remind me show you how to using StatQuants on this one. Um, I will show you. So I finished three part two, and I think I will do a video right now for StatQuants from chapter one through chapter three. Let me...